I mean, so when you say sing, you know, I mean, Jimmy never sang. He, he sort of threw the lyric at you, you know, in a very casual way, but it worked. So speaking of Jimmy, it was about 45 years ago mm -hmm. here in New York where you did a run that, that he accompanied you on stage or he showed yes. up night by night. Uh -huh. what, what remains with you about either his personality or his playing? It's just a, almost beyond human, really. I, he, he, whis he whispered, he hardly ever said, and he never shouted, or you had to really have a good hearing to In hear his that. speaking voice, you yeah. said. Yeah, hey, you ready? You know, sort of short sound bites. Up. And I tried to keep up with him for three days like, without sleep. And we'd go to a club, play there, and then he would have breakfast at four or five in the morning. And then I think we'd go into our separate hotels. I'd go back to his hotel, we'd play. And then he goes and has more breakfast. And then he's off somewhere else. In three days, I, I thought, I can't deal with this. I didn't really want to get involved in whatever it was that was keeping him awake. And just as we were getting close, a tragedy happened in London. You didn't really, I mean, do anything but stand and listen when he was in full flood. And then it was my turn. I had to delve into everything that was in me to, to match what he was doing. And, I, and he knew that I had quirkiness that he loved, you know, that wasn't necessarily anything spectacular, but it would be a different spin on a lick or I'd, I'd maybe slacken off a string and, and do a sitar noise, and he loved that. And just anything really off the scale was, was what Jimmy liked about my playing.